the goal of this legislation is to have an investigation. Do you know who do investigations best? Investigative journalists. And two of them wrote a really expansive article about that, a nonpartisan, impartial document that talks about facts. What do prosecutors do? They prosecute crimes. They go after people who have committed crimes once they have credible evidence, which we've not seen, which we've not heard, which no one has even hinted that they have. And so in today's M Live, Emily Lawler and Julie Mack talk about just this thing. They, they quote one of our former colleagues, the now current prosecutor from Macomb, someone who we all know and know well and know has never pulled a punch or thought a second twice about his words. And when asked about his evidence, he said, he doesn't know, he doesn't have any, but rather a culmination of general information. He'd like law enforcement to look into. Now, I've never heard Pete Lucido make a statement so guarded to say something so obtruse, but let's talk about what the investigative journals found out. They said, and I quote, on two different metrics, Michigan is slightly below the national average in regards to nursing home deaths. The death toll per 1,000 nursing home residents and the percentage of total COVID-19 deaths attributed to long-term care facilities, on the latter, about 31% of the state's COVID-19 deaths are attributed to long-term care facilities, compared to a national average of 34%, which makes us 3% low. Quoting again from the article, in focusing on that policy, Republicans are ignoring the outsized role played by transmission rates in the communities where the nursing homes were located. Say those who have studied the outbreak data, experts say the big problem has not been patient transfers, but asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic transmission by nursing home staff who come in and out of the facilities each day. One of my good friends, uh, the Senator from the 38th District, in talking about this thing said, there were mistakes made, but in good faith, which doesn't sound like the basis for a criminal investigation, it sounds like the basis for us to come together and say, hey, what are the policy changes that we need to make going forward? But there was no policy to force COVID-19 positive patients in homes, something that seems to be re-adjudicated in this chamber every day, multiple times. Uh, but Michigan, and I'm quoting again, Michigan did do in the spring of 2020 was create a system of hubs comprised of nursing homes that volunteered, I say again, volunteered to take COVID-19 patients from other facilities who could not properly isolate them or patients leaving hospitals that needed a nursing home to go to. Those facilities were required to have total physical separation between the COVID and non-COVID patients and have separate staffs. Uh, Melissa Samuel, the president and CEO of HCAM, said there's this theory that somehow Michigan did it differently, that we're weird. Uh, that, but in fact, most states did the same thing as Michigan in isolating COVID patients from non-COVID patients in the same facilities. Again, no investigation. The people who run the thing were saying, we did what most people did, which was the best that we could, which obviously was not good enough. So let's fix it going forward. Uh, even going further, uh, in front of the US Senate, um, Tamara Konzinski, a University of Chicago expert in geriatric public health who testified before the US Senate committee looking into COVID deaths in nursing homes said, I have seen no evidence, no good evidence, that those policies that Michigan had changed anything or had any effect on COVID-19 outcomes in nursing homes. So again, why do we constantly keep going back except for political points? Because all the experts say, there's nothing there. The prosecutors say, ah, there's no good evidence. And people are looking. Uh, she goes on to say, if you look at the nursing home deaths per nursing home residents, the highest states are equally divided between Republican states and Democratic states. This is not a political issue. This is an issue that we lost too many people we care about. This is the issue that we lost too many people that we love, and we haven't spent enough time trying to make sure that that number is less. The states that had this policy about hospital missions don't pop out in any way. And that's a direct quote. They don't pop out in any way. We all know that COVID spread has been the number one issue. And I think the author sums it up quite, quite clearly. It's a point made by others in focusing on the discarded policy from last spring, 
Republicans are dis discounting the major factor driving the numbers, which is community spread of the virus. Even a casual look at the pattern of nursing home outbreaks shows nursing home cases and deaths go up as transmission rates of the virus increase in the surrounding community. That's a direct quote. We know that this is about stopping the spread in communities, and that stops the spread in nursing homes. Again, quoting, those nursing home case and death trends are almost indistinguishable from virus prevalence in the surrounding community. Again, if you wanna protect residents in nursing homes, protect residents outside. For months, the refrain has been from this chamber, show us the data. Here is what the data says, and I'm quoting, Michigan is below the national average in percentage of coronavirus deaths attributed to skilled nursing facilities based on data collected by the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. In Michigan, 23% of all coronavirus deaths involved residents of facilities reporting to CMS nationally. It's 27%. So Michigan is doing 4% better. Again, not great, but not worse. Michigan is below the national average in coronavirus deaths per thousand nursing homes, resident CMS data shows. Michigan is slightly below average in percentage of people aged 75 and older who have died of coronavirus, regardless of whether they lived in a long-term care, long care facility since the start of the pandemic. 1.3% of Americans aged 75 and older have died of coronavirus compared to 1.2% of Michiganders in that age group. There's no smoking gun. There is no data that suggests that all this thing is going wrong. And Robin Rontel, a policy analyst, uh, director at U of M's chart, led independent analysis of Michigan's handling of coronavirus in nursing homes. That project involved, as she'd say, many hours of going through the data and working with state staff to access the data, because it's available. Uh, and she says, we actually had lots of data to look at. And the publicly available data was really comprehensive. That does not sound like, can't find the data, it's hidden. It just sounds like professional researchers are good at finding data. Experts say the big problem has not been patient transfers, but asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic transmission by nursing home staff who come in and out of facilities each and every day. The industry experts and those who have delved into Michigan's nursing home data to push the investigation, the push to investigate smacks of politics, not policy. Michigan Senate Oversight Committee held hearings. A state task force was convened to look at the situation and, to, and a think tank affiliated with the University of Michigan did its own analysis over the summer. They all concluded that mistakes were made and there were lessons to be learned, but those largely resulted from how hard and fast the pandemic hit in March of 2020, leaving nursing homes and, state, and the state scrambling to react to a highly contagious and deadly virus that nobody had account, encountered before. Others go on to say, this comes from someone at the University of Chicago, I've seen no evidence, no good evidence that those policies in Michigan had changed anything or had any effect on COVID-19 outcomes in nursing homes, said Tamara Konetska, a University of Chicago expert in geriatric public health. I could go on, there are more and more examples, there's more data, I urge you to take a look at it.